Hey world, welcome back to the shop. So it has been probably a couple of months since my last update. Uh, for those of you who have been following along, this is the C1 chassis that I was working on last time. If you, if you kept up with the video series, these are the frame rails that I made. Um, you got to see the battery box, you got to see the uh, fabrication of the frame rails. I don't know if I went into any suspension stuff, but I think I will in a future video show a bit more of this suspension and how it worked, but I thought I better give an update on the progress of this chassis. I am at a point where tomorrow I will be putting the body back on this, so uh, perfect time to, to show you guys around here. So a couple things I want to show from the last one that we had done, it was a two wheel drive Tesla chassis and it used the entire Model 3 pack. It used the same spindles as this. These are the spindles that I have designed here at the shop. They were designed for two wheel drive and four wheel drive. In this particular vehicle, we've decided to go all wheel drive. So this is a front motor rear motor obviously back there and this front suspension and spindle design does function on both the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive it utilizes tesla model 3 calipers brake rotors and hubs this is a shortened cv shaft so these cv shafts have been shortened by two inches. Um, I will eventually be making that here. I do not have the spline down pat yet, but I fully intend to. Now, this exotic thing is a, our bell crank suspension. So what I ended up doing is, if you guys are familiar with the C1, it is sort of an awkward layout. The front wheels are actually a bit forward of where the engine block is. So we have, if you're underneath the hood, you have the engine and the wheels and suspension are almost forward of that. So it leaves us with this kind of weird layout. Now, when I built this and I laid it out, I have my front motor here that has to hit my wheel center line. So this is really the only spot that it can go. And it left me with this big open void here where the engine block used to sit. Maybe partly showing off, maybe partly out of necessity. Um, I've come up with this bell crank suspension. So quite simply what this does is this adjustable rod up to this billet arm runs back through this set of bearings and then to our sweet Olin's coilovers back here. This is that awkward space where there really was um, you can see right there the ground. It just wasn't uh, it wasn't a good use of space. Now, quick demonstration is this this arm just runs on a solid rod through to this arm. So it's just very simple, super straightforward. There's tons of clearance on my CV axle, so I didn't have to fit um, a coil over through here as I would with a normal four wheel drive. A few extra benefits to that are, since this is a four wheel drive, I can't just run a coil over straight down here like I can on a two wheel drive model. Obviously the CV axle is in the way. I wanted to keep everything as low profile as possible. So I didn't just build a yoke and then run a coil over up here like uh, how the Tesla would have done in the original. And this gives me an opportunity to change my motion ratio through this set of arms back to my fully adjustable coilover, which is now completely easily accessible underneath the hood. Um, the other cool thing this does is this gives me provisions for my steering coming up through. So my steering coming off the rack sneaks right through this entire bell crank mechanism and up to the steering column where I have good clearance past everything rather than if I had my original design had a, a laid back coilover with a, with a uh, 90 degree um, 
bell crank, I guess, that would have gone down to the bottom. So this um, gives me great, great clearance for my steering coming up through it. And, you know, it's just a, a generally interesting suspension system to look at. So, I mean, that pretty much covers the front. Um, the battery is, if you were following along again, this is the battery enclosure that houses all of our Volkswagen ID4 cells. So this is removable from the underside of the chassis, the same way any modern EV is. This is very easy to just pop the battery out the bottom side and then get into individual modules if um, there was ever a problem with them or even to just future proof it. So it's uh, very easily accessible, very easy to work on after the fact. You don't have to disassemble the entire car. This just pops out like normal. Uh, moving to the rear, we have our 4D1 motor. So this is our performance Model 3 motor. This is, again, just hung in our regular chassis that, that if you were following along, you saw me build. Same Olin's coilovers in the rear. And, but this uses, again, my own spindle for the rear. So I have our own machine spindle. that accepts, again, Tesla Model 3 hubs, rotors, and calipers. So this is Model 3 front and rear brakes, um, excellent brakes. And this allowed me to get away from the five-link suspension that Tesla uses. By making my own rear hub, I've simplified the amount of links in here. So this is essentially still a multi-link suspension, but it's kind of down to four links now. I've got my coilover acting on our larger control arm on the bottom with a radius rod of sorts coming off the front. So this is my camber adjust or my caster adjustment on the front for the radius rod. My upper control arm is very similar to Formula E stuff. So what this gives me is adjustability here for camber and rear toe so rear toe is controlled by this link here by tightening and loosening this i can affect my rear toe and then if i did the combination of these two joints this is my rear camber so very adjustable and very adjustable on the car I've got a provision for a rear sway bar built into the chassis. So this is a, a pretty slick little way of tying in the, the rear sway bar. I will likely be into putting the body on this tomorrow. So this is about the last opportunity you're going to have to see this chassis in its entirety laid bare. Uh, but I will also video putting the car together. And uh, if you guys want to follow along, you will. Um, I will try to provide updates a little more rapidly than what this last one was. Thanks a lot, guys.